Good evening, everyone. Tonight we visit places you typically see on our program, beautiful beaches, scenic landscapes and coastal islands. But tonight you'll have to guess where we are. The first question, name this lighthouse. An uphill adventure leads to this main landmark. The lighthouse is located on 64 acres of lush landscape that's owned by a group of local citizens. You see Mount Washington, 86 miles away. The island's storied history dates back to 1795 when George Washington commissioned the light. The magic of the lighthouse is the first order for now lens, which sits at the top. And you can see it now with the sun coming through it and all the prism effect. And Inside is 1,000 watt light bulb, but you can buy it staples probably. But because of the lens and the refraction and the formula that Fresnel came up with, it goes out 30 miles. The lighthouse is one of a kind in more ways than one. The formula for the glass has been destroyed during World War II by the Germans, so it can never be replicated. You saw the preview, and now time to see if you can name the lighthouse. Is it A, Owl's Head Lighthouse, B, Goat Island Lighthouse, or C, Seguin Lighthouse? The answer, C, Seguin Lighthouse in the Gulf of Maine. Shana Seymour takes us there now. Lighthouse lovers will travel anywhere to see a lighthouse. Everybody has their unique hobby, I suppose. These lighthouses, they all have stories. And everybody likes a good story. These are really America's castles. This is our link with the past. Some sit on islands. Others proud sentinels on Maine's rocky coastline. Each is unique and nearly all are struggling to survive. Bob Trapani is executive director of the American Lighthouse Foundation. The American Lighthouse Foundation is a national nonprofit founded in 1994 and simply put its mission is to save lighthouses, share them with the public, and also cultivate a new generation of preservationists along the way. When we preserve a lighthouse, we're also trying to preserve the natural environment that it sits within, a natural environment that's been here in this case since 1835. The lighthouses are historic and yet in this age of technology, still vital. Just ask Ethan DeBerry, who runs a charter service out of Popham Beach. Grew up lobster and fishing around here. It's nice to look up and see a lighthouse. Electronics and GPS and all that stuff's good, but there's nothing like an affirmative, positive read on an island. In these waters, that reed comes from Seguin Island, Maine's tallest and second oldest light. It lies two and a half miles from the mouth of the Kennebec River. Visitors are welcome, but be warned, it's not easy. You don't get on and off Seguin Island without getting your feet wet. There's no dock. It's a pretty well-known harbor for coastal cruisers to come in. The Friends of Seguin Island choose caretakers from a pool of applicants to spend the summer on the island. They live in the old keeper's quarters, maintain the property, and give tours. There's even a museum and gift shop. And you see Mount Washington, 86 miles away. France Cousin and Michael Boonstra traded the island of Manhattan for a summer on Seguin. It took about one minute to get in love with it. Every time you look out at any direction, it's always different. You know, there's the sun, the weather, the fog, the light, the moon. It's just um, paradise. Michael mows the lawns, and France has become skilled at using a dinghy to haul people and supplies ashore. There's an old-fashioned tramway to get goods to the top. There's a delicate balance to both living on and visiting Seguin Island. It's very important for the Friends of Seguin to make sure that it stays in a pristine condition and that's also part of, I think, our duty to help people respect the nature and to, to enjoy it and for what it is. 
Beautiful. According to the Friends of Seguin Island website, the lighthouse is closed to visitors and tours because of COVID, but the island, including the picnic tables and trails, is open and cove moorings will be available to day visitors. Up next, can you name this island or islands? Here is a clue from Ted Reinstein.